We only get one outline question for this test, this hard module, but let's take advantage of it. We have to go to the goals first and make sure we understand the task that we are given. The student wants to make and support a generalization about the orbits of comets. There's a lot of components here, okay? So the ones that really stand out to me are the, the idea of a generalization. Um, that's Honestly, that's the only one that really stands out because that's very specific, uh, which is a weird thing to say about a generalization, but it's a very powerful word. It's a strong word. A generalization is a specific kind of concept, right? So that one, you know, it's unusual. Um, I don't usually see that kind of thing in these questions. So for me, it, it matters. So let's see what we can get based on the uh, bullet points here. Astronomers estimate that the number of comets orbiting the sun is in the billions. 81P wild is one of many comets whose orbits has, orbit has changed over time. So many comets change. Uh, 81P wild's orbit once lay between the orbits of Uranus and Jupiter. The comet's orbit is now positioned between the orbits of Jupiter and Mars. So look, the fact that they asked me for a generalization and then they gave me one specific example is clearly a setup for a trap. Right? They, they would know that now we're going to maybe want to talk about 81P in very specific terms, but the question is saying we want a generalization. We want to really talk about comets in a bigger way, not just about this one, this one particular one. So let's see what we get. Uh, a, astronomers estimate that the number of comets orbiting the sun is in the billions. The comet's orbits may change over time. Okay, maybe. Um, that's certainly maybe a generalization. It may change over time. But now I'm kind of thinking about this other idea, right? This other goal of um, supporting the generalization. Well, there's nothing supporting it. They're just making it. So maybe we need to support it with this particular example. Um, B, like Uranus, Uranus, Jupiter, and Mars, billions of comets orbit the sun. Well, that's not saying anything about their orbits. Uh, it's not, there's no support. And there's nothing there. That's definitely wrong. One example of a comet is 81P Wild, whose orbit around the sun once lay between Uranus's and Jupiter's orbits, but is now positioned between those of Jupiter and Mars. Okay, well, it's certainly talking about 81P Wild, but I think that that's the trap, um, because I don't think it's talking in any general terms about comets, right? It's using this one example, but it's not saying any sort of like lesson we're supposed to learn from that example. So hopefully it's D, let's see. A comet's orbit around the sun may change over time. That's a generalization. Check. The orbit of comet 81P Wild once lay between the orbits of Uranus and Jupiter, but is now positioned between those of Jupiter and Mars. So it's talking about the orbits, it's making a generalization, and it is supporting it with this, right? So that's the key. We still needed the 81P Wild, but we needed to use it for this bigger goal of making a claim about all comets, not just that one. So D is going to be the answer. And, um, it, this maybe is a good opportunity to talk about the colon and what its function is, just as a reminder. Structurally, in order to use a colon, we need a sentence beforehand, and then we can have lots of things after. In this case, um, we have a sentence, so it's two sentences. But the key is, the second idea is kind of answering or explaining something about the first idea, the first part. So a comet's orbit around the sun may change over time. How do we know that? because of all the stuff about 81P wild, right? So it's a perfect example of how the colon is supposed to function stylistically, and it's doing a lot of work here to actually help us accomplish these goals. So most punctuation marks are just kind of there to help us with the structure of a sentence. The colon is very different though. I mean, it has structural components, but it also has this stylistic use that's very powerful. It's more powerful than a comma or a period or a semicolon. It really lets us connect ideas um, and, and show causation and explanation in ways that other punctuation marks cannot. So here, that really does help me. That's not the only thing that's making me pick it here, but it's, a, it's just a reminder of what that punctuation mark does and how it can kind of, you know, almost work like a word and, and carry meaning, uh, even though it's just two dots.